Okay, so now that I've determined I have a triangle here, which in this case happens to be isosceles, I can start working with the measurements of the angles and see if I can get closer to the idea that this angle is half the measurement of this arc. Uh, there's a few different ways I can go about this in working with what I can figure out about uh, the angles here. I could jump right into saying that because this is a isosceles angle, or isosceles triangle, that these two angles must be equivalent. But that doesn't get me anywhere. It doesn't help me determine the measurement of this arc. And just knowing that this angle is equivalent to this angle, I wouldn't even know where to go next. It doesn't tell me anything. So what else do I know about the angles of a triangle? Well, another thing I know is that an exterior angle is equivalent to the sum of the two opposite angles in a triangle. Now that might get me closer to where I need to be because if I knew what this angle was, then I would immediately know what the measurement of this arc is. And knowing the measurement of this arc, then I can um, hopefully deduce something that will relate back to this angle over here. So I'm going to go with that and see where it leads me. I'm going to go with the exterior, or the triangle exterior angle conjecture. And I'm going to say, I'm going to move this up so you can see. Actually, I'm going to move number five up over the other steps. So I'm going to say that um, uh, that angle ABO, which is ABO, so this angle right here, plus, I'm using a little algebra here, angle BAO, which is going to be that angle right there, is equivalent to angle AOC. And I know that because of the triangle exterior angle conjecture. Okay, so now I need to go to step six. So now I've proven that this angle plus that angle equals this angle. I can do some algebra that can get me to moving these things around in a way that might get closer to an equation like this right here, that measurement angle ABC equals half of measurement of, of the arc AC. Uh, and in order to do that, it would be easier if I can designate some variables to label these angles just so I can maybe work with X and Y's like I'm used to working with when I'm doing algebra. So I'm going to call angle ABO, which is this angle, I'm going to call that X. And I'm going to call angle BAO, which is this angle, I'm going to call that Y. And I'm going to call this angle Z. Hopefully you can see that um, in the video. Okay, so if I do that, then I'm just going to put in parentheses up here that this is the same thing as X plus Y equals Z. In fact, that's what the book does, is it automatically uh, identifies these variables as those angles. Now, if I know that x plus y equals z, that's the same step as 5, because I haven't really changed anything, um, then I also know, because this is an isosceles triangle, that I could say x plus x equals z. So the reason why I can say that is definition of isosceles triangle. And if I know that x plus x equals z, then I could also say, now I'm going to do my algebra, that 2x oops, equals z and that x equals 1 half z. And when I'm doing algebra like this, and I'm just basically balancing an equation, uh, moving things around from side to side is balancing equation. I can call all that properties of identity. Uh, I mean, I'm sorry, of equality. Properties of equality. Because that's all I'm doing is I'm just working with equivalent sign and I'm balancing my equation. Um, so now I've got something. When I do x equals 1 half z, this is starting to look very close to my original 
statement that I need to prove, which is the which is that the measurement of angle ABC equals one half times something else, which is the measurement of AC. This is looking very similar. So I'm going to move this up so we can see. Um, now maybe I can just simply substitute in, back in, for x and z, what those are equivalent to, and that can get me closer to this, what I need to prove. Um, so if I do that, I'm going to put in the measurement of angle A, B, C is what x is supposed to equal. No, actually, or ABO is what I had originally determined it to be. Um, equals one half, and what did I say z was? It was the measurement of angle A O U C. Okay, now I'm very close to what I needed to prove. Oops, I need to put my reason here. And my reason is just simply substitution. When I've determined that something equals something else, I can always substitute them back and forth. Um, okay, so now I have something that's very, very, very close. I'm going to move this up so you can see to what our original statement was. Um, is that I have a measurement of ABO, which is the same thing as measurement of angle ABC, is equivalent to one half the measurement of something else. Now here it says measurement of arc AC, and here it says measurement of angle AOC. Well, if I go back to my original drawing, angle AOC is this angle right here. Now I need to make it equal to the arc, and it just so happens that we have a conjecture that works for that and it's called definition of arc measure, I know that this angle is equivalent to the measurement of that arc, according to that uh, conjecture. So I'm going to put over here a definition, move this up again, of arc measure tells me that uh, measurement of angle AOC is equivalent to measurement of arc AC. Okay, and then lastly, if I know that the measurement of angle AOC is equivalent to this arc, now I can just simply substitute the measurement of arc AC into this part of the equation. Oops, can't see that. So I'm going to substitute this into measurement of angle AOC. And I'm going to rewrite that same equation. So it's measurement of angle ABO is equal to one half the measurement of arc AC. So now I'm writing arc AC instead of angle AOC. And the reason why I can do that is again substitution. And what I have now is basically pretty much, okay, I'm showing it, uh, step 10 after 4, but pretty much the same thing that it says here, only this is measurement of angle ABC, and I put measurement angle ABO. If I want to write it exactly to what I need to prove, then I simply need to do that. I could have been doing that all along, but for me it just was more clear to show that it was ABO. Um, and again, it's substitution. And now I have exactly what I tried to prove.